The news is hot with information about Iraq being taken over. What is going on? And who or what is ISIS? Let's talk about it. Shalom, my friends. There's a lot going on in the news right now. People are asking me questions, so I thought I would do this update and uh, fill you in on what I know. Uh, Iraq is in the hands of ISIS. I-S-I-S. -S. And it looks like an Islamic caliphate is going on. First of all, what is ISIS? That's an acronym for Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Sham. This is a Sunni group. Nothing short of a satanic, demon-possessed army. They've been capturing, torturing, and beheading infidels, that is, Jews and Christians, and leaving the dead carcasses lying in the streets. You may have seen, I hope you haven't, YouTube videos of people being beheaded. Uh, I would never watch such a thing. And I would say to you, if you see these, don't watch them. You don't need those kind of images in your head. ISIS is the wealthiest terrorist group in the world. Formerly, they were known as Al-Qaeda. And um, what is this thing called caliphate? A caliphate is an Islamic state led by a supreme religious and political leader known as a caliph. That is the imam chosen by Allah. And that is a successor to Muhammad. It's under the constitution of Medina and Islamic or Sharia law. These people want to see everyone on earth under Sharia law. As far as they're concerned, everyone is. And they want to see and hear everyone say that there is no God but Allah. And uh, if somebody doesn't say that, behead them. Everyone on earth uh, not worshipping Allah should be put to death. Allah, in my opinion, is Hashatan, Satan. I say that because Allah has no son. This is according to the Quran. And if Allah has no son, you are not talking about Yahweh. Yahweh has a son whom he loves greatly beyond description. Now, as far as the news goes, the, the pot is boiling over on the stove right now. Uh, Islam is, there's a, a, a surge going on. Last week, some 90,000 Iraqi troops fled out of Baghdad when they heard that ISIS was coming from Babylon, which is only an hour away south of Baghdad. Uh, they're <laughs> they've taken over Iraq. They're supposedly on their way to Baghdad. Every place they've been on their way towards Baghdad so far, they've just left dead people all over the streets, beheaded. Um, it's, 
it's quite a mess that's going on. And uh, just through the record, some people have been asking me this, you know, in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, chapter 18, uh, Babylon is spoken of, and a lot of people like to think Babylon is the United States, or, you know, who knows what else. I'm sure there's other suppositions going on. If you watch my playlist on the book of Revelation, uh, and specifically when you uh, watch me cover chapters 17 and 18, you'll see that I think Babylon means Babylon. You know, <laughs> Yahweh says what he means, and he means what he says. The word says Babylon, the word means Babylon. Uh, years back, we had Saddam Hussein. He was rebuilding Babylon. And that has not stopped. That's still going on. But uh, just so you know, I believe that Babylon is literal when it's spoken of in the book of Reve uh, Revelation. I mentioned this before. ISIS originally operated under the mantle of Al-Qaeda until 2006 when it had adopted this new name, ISIS. Uh, there's a, a man by the name of Abu Bakr Baghdadi. He became leader of ISIS in 2010, incorporating Syrian terrorists into the regime. Baghdadi claims to be a direct descendant of Muhammad, and the United States has a $10 million bounty on his head. Now, what I'm, what I'm curious about right now is uh, since Friday, last week, the 13th of June, 2014, uh, ISIS has been in Babylon. And I'm wondering if they're going to set up their headquarters there. And uh, I'm wondering if uh, if that becomes so, then will Babylon start flourishing again and become the uh, great city mentioned in Revelation uh, 17? You know, when you get into the tribulation period, Babylon will be flourishing. Now, another point is that Iraq has asked the United States for help, but so far, the United States has not responded. And this, this whole thing, I haven't even mentioned Hamas. You know, they're doing all kinds of stuff too. It's just, it's welling up. It's getting strong. And it's certainly looking like the formation of the Psalm 83 war. After I close this video out, stay tuned. I'm going to have some links for you to click on that will give you more information, uh, including a link to my good friend Scotty, uh, his video. He's putting one up also at the same time. So I'm going to link over to his. He'll be linking to mine. But uh, like I said, this is looking like the formation of the Psalm 83 war. And uh, you can also take a look at Jeremiah chapter 49, Isaiah chapters 17 and 19, and Zechariah, that's Zechariah chapter 12. This, to me, my friends, is bitter sweet. Bitter because these things are extremely sorrowful events leading up to the tribulation period which is an indescribable sorrowful event and sweet because it tells me that those who belong to Elohim are going to escape these sorrowful events and we will go home. Something I 
revel in, an idea that I just revel in. I can't wait to see the wonder and the joy, eternal joy that will be, will be faced. Now one final statement I want to make. I've said this before. Anyone who <laughs> wars against Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, anyone who wars against Israel, Yisrael, has to be insane. 6,000 years of history. Any war waged against Israel, Israel has always won. Anyone coming against her has always failed. Why don't we hear about that so much? I mean, even, uh, you know, American newscasters, supposedly America is or was a friend of Israel. Whenever they talk about Israel's wars, they never mention the miraculous quality of every single one of them. I'm not sure if it was uh, 1948 or 1967, the Six Day War, whatever. There were 12 nations were coming against Israel. The rabbis expected so much death to occur that they commissioned all the public parks to be set up uh, to become cemeteries. They thought there were going to be that many deaths. Twelve nations coming against Israel. Israel had five cannons and one tank to fight twelve nations. And they won. It's, uh, there's stories. Every single war. You know, we read about the ones in, in the, the first covenant, the Old Testament. And, you know, you kind of, you kind of let it wash over because, oh, it is, you know, full of miracles. Well, we don't see Yahweh operating on the earth today the way he did in the first covenant stories except when Israel is at war there are stories uh, when when the Jews returned to their homeland in 1948 they fought those wars in 1967 the Six Day War there are stories unbelievable uh, uh, Egypt was uh, was coming against Israel, uh, and Yahweh caused so much confusion in Egypt and in all her armies that they made mistakes left and right that were <laughs> crazy. It's it's so obvious that Yahweh fights Israel's battles. No one can ever win. Jerusalem, my friends, is 3,000 years old. It is the place where Yahweh said that he will dwell and forever protect his people. It is the place where the Red Sea was parted. It is the place where the sun stood still so Joshua could finish a battle. It is a the place where David slew Goliath. Every war ever waged against Israel, past, present, or future, utterly fails. Now, stay tuned. I have some links for you to check out that will augment this message. And uh, as always, I hope and I pray that this video is a beracha to you and yours. Until next time, Shalom, my friends. Now two thousand years have gone by, it 
It's another working day Some would rather let it lie But the question still remains 